what's uh, growing on, plant peeps? Glad you're here with us today. We're gonna show you guys five amazing shade trees for y'all, so let's go. So today it's summer and you guys need some shade trees. We have five amazing, truly amazing shade trees to show you that you can add to your own next landscape project. First, Princeton Elm. So Princeton Elm, scientific name is Ulmus Americana Princeton. Um, you know, this is a nice shade tree. It has your nice green foliage during the growing seasons with a really heavy undercarriage showing a lot of uh, strong three-dimensional margins in there. Um, zones three to nine, so it's very adaptable all over the country. And uh, pretty big growing tree, you know, you're getting 50 to 70 feet of height with 30 to 50 feet of width. So gonna be a very big, very mature growing large-scale tree. And uh, the overall shape habit of the foliage is going to be more vasy, but you know as it matures it will kind of round off. Um, really nice tree to add to any kind of scenery you know given patio shade that you need for your decks, any public kind of chill areas that you need covered this one's going to do it. Um, these are also adaptable to urban environments so street trees it will take that smoggy type polluted air and still, you know, perform okay, right? Um, average to medium uh, watering requirements. Um, it doesn't need a whole lot of watering once established. So that's a good sign. Um, very adaptable to insect disease pressure. So, you know, the history of elm trees has been that Dutch elm disease that was pretty widespread back in the day cafe but this variety, Princeton, is very susceptible to getting Dutch elms. So it's very hardy variety uh, as far as elms go. So in the fall, you're gonna get this really nice, uh, this green's gonna turn to a nice yellowy gold color for a nice fall display. So this is one to add to your next project, Princeton Elm. Alrighty guys, next is Natal Oak. Scientific name, Natalia Quercus. I said that backwards, Quercus Natalia. That shows you I don't say the scientific names a whole lot, but for those of you who love scientific names, um, let's see, zones five to nine. So it is fairly adaptable some, to some colder climates as well as your hot southern climates. And this one is very huge, so you're getting 50 to 70 foot tall, about 30 to 40 foot wide, and uh, just a big old, good old shade tree. We've used these so often in our landscape contracting business. Um, oaks are so durable, they're so strong of a tree. They really uh, are hardwooded type shade trees. So this one's gonna get massive. It's gonna give you a lot of shade. It's gonna cover a lot of real estate. Um, the overall habit is oval to rounded. It does like average to medium to wet. So go from average, medium to wet. So it will love any of those conditions for uh, wetness of the soil. So a lot of times you'll see these along pond edges, uh, water's edge. Um, this can take that wet feet, so to speak. So that's real cool for that to happen. You know, low maintenance tree, there isn't a lot of insect disease pressures on uh, most of these oaks. I will tell you though, we've had a lot of issues with tent caterpillar. And those of you who've never heard of that, it's just a caterpillar that lays a nest of youngins from the south. And all those little jokers eventually hatch out and feed on, they love oak trees. I think they do maple but I know they love oaks. But So anyway, if you see that white web starting to grow and get bigger, try to rip it out or spray it with uh, just a bifenthrin or something. But um, other than that, just keep it limbed up. Um, it naturally has a good limbing up structure. They are single stem, 
uh, trees, they are deciduous. So all the shade trees we're going over today are deciduous. Most of these trees become mature in that 12 to 15 range of years. So just to give you an idea, when can I expect to have awesome, awesome full shade? It's gonna be that 12 year mark when you're gonna really see a substantial size of 20 or so feet that's gonna give you that shade that you need. But, you know, hey, this is a 25 to 35, 45 gallon actually container. I'm already in the shade now. So if you put these somewhat close to your area of need, you can potentially get some shade from the start, but give this room to grow because this joker is gonna get really wide and you don't want this thing overtaking your house, et cetera, so be careful. We are nuts about these because it also has acorns. So this is a acorn producing tree and uh, squirrels love the acorns. Acorns uh, will develop, you know, in the fall and then let go of those acorns in the winter. So I imagine uh, you've heard of these hitting cars. You know, if you park under these in the cities, at your home, at your grandma's, boom, 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 baby because those nuts are coming down, so be careful. But uh, other than that, it's a great tree and uh, definitely one of our top five faves, the Nuts Hall Oak. Kevin, Kevin, go. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I was taking a little siesta in the shade. Uh, next one on the list here, we have to show you it's green gable black gum trees. Have you guys heard of these? Nysta sylvatica black or green gable. So that's the scientific name. Zones three to nine um, is another massive shade tree. Very stately once it gets mature. Um, you have an overall green foliage and uh, it'll come into a really amazing fall color of these really interesting reds, vibrant reds, um, even orange to red in the fall, but really a stately tree. And I'll say that because once you get to maturity, this bark, this stem starts to develop these interesting uh, textures similar to a white oak. Uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, seen that kind of bark, but it's very uh, uniform with a lots of pitting and indention in that bark structure when it matures. And once again, single stem, deciduous shade tree. It's gonna get big, 40 to 50 feet tall with about 30 feet wide. And like I said, that zone range is very wide as well, three to nine. So it's gonna adapt to a lot of varying areas throughout the uh, country. And this one's kind of interesting as well because of the uh, moisture. Uh, it has a very forgiving moisture content as one's fallen over. We'll put that back. Must have had some breezes going through. But, um, you know, average to wet soil, and which means that this grows in all kinds of unique soil conditions. It prefers acidic soil. So that's a good sign. That means it's very hardy and can be more of a native type growing plant. So, you know, you'll see these along or can plant these along pond edges, water edges, and not worry about the wet feet that it uh, may get. But like I said, it also go to that average, uh, you know, soil and watering need if so required. But like I said, stately, very uniform in structure once it matures. Gigantic tree, gigantic shade. So it's throwing you lots of shade, which is what we want. Hot summertime, we need that relief. You know, the good thing about uh, deciduous type shade trees is they're dual purpose. So what do I mean? That means on um, you know southern exposure of the house that you have, it's gonna do your sun protectant, right? But in the winter, it's gonna lose those leaves and then invite the sun through into your windows of the home. So that really dual action is very important to how you can enjoy your spaces. So in the winter time, we want more sun, we need the warmth. Summertime, we need the shade, we need the coolness. 
which can cool down your homes and help save money with the AC bills. So shade trees are a huge part of our lives, not for just having shade, but they are beneficial for air filtration, for um, environments, for birds and habitats, and, but they're also an, an ability to save money. Who knew, right? But, you know, plants are amazing. So all things grow with love for a reason. We love our plants for that. So black gum, green gable. Add that one to your next landscape list. All right, everybody. Another awesome shade tree for you. Brandywine maple. Brandywine maple. Acer rubrum, scientific name. Brandywine in the house. By the way, these shirts are fire. All things grow with love. Outdoor inspirations. Get one today while they're hot. And it's hot. It's summertime. Shade trees. All about it. We need some shade. Brandywine maple is going to do that for you in spades. So Brandywine zones four to eight. Has an overall, you know, growth habit. It's more of a rounded habit of form. Once again, single stem, deciduous, uh, large growing, you know, 25 to 40 feet tall and almost as wide. So it's gonna throw a lot of shade your way and that's what we want. It has this really nice silverish color to the bark. Very adaptable, average to wet soil. Believe it or not, maples like a little bit of moist soil. So that's kind of nice that it can go average even to a little bit of wet soil environments. Um, as far as soil types, you know, acidic soil is fine for these um, native type trees of maples. Um, another thing to talk about too is, you know, maintenance. You know, maples in general, red maples, have had a history of gloomy scale. And we'll put a link in the description below. It's a widespread problem. We, it's been an absolute nightmare, just total devastation to the old school red maples out there. But thank goodness new cultivars have come to light and Brandywine's one of them. So they are more susceptible to that gloomy scale disease. So that's a great, great thing to have. Now, this green foliage is gonna go to a very nice um, fall foliage color, which is simply amazing. Brandywine's known for that red to purple color of fall foliage. So it's a very unique uh, fall foliage color as far as maples go. And uh, silverish type bark structure, um, low maintenance, like I said. Uh, maples will give you a little bit of top rooting, so be careful as it matures. They are known to shoot out some top rootings, which is kind of a problem for any sidewalks or driveways. So make sure you plant accordingly and away from structures because it is going to get big and brawly. And that's why we love our shade trees because we need that canopy, just like an umbrella. If you're out in the summer heat uh, with a little teeny martini glass umbrella, we'd be in trouble especially if we're gonna be out there all day. So we need a huge umbrella and uh, love it. Brandy wine, maple. Last on the list, we got Duraheat river birch. The scientific name is um, Betula nigra and Duraheat as well. So Duraheat was a, a new cultivar for river birch family that was able to adapt to the heat better. The old cultivars would tend to lose their leaves quite often in the summer and they just would just drop them all over the place. Really bad. So this is a Dura heat, so it's more susceptible to heat and it won't lose its leaves as much and as often. But you will get some of that in full sun. So, you know, zones, I believe three to seven. Yeah, three to seven plant zones. So very adaptable all across, across the country. This is a large growing shade tree. So you're getting that 30 to 50 range um, and almost as wide, but 30 to 50 tall, almost as wide. This is a deciduous tree, shade tree, but this one's a little unique. It's multi-trunk, so no longer the single stem. Now we have two, three, four, five canes, which will get very substantial 
when it does grow. And so we have a very nice vase to rounded shape um, once it gets established. These are fast growing. You're gonna get two feet plus per year of growth out of these uh, river birches. Um, soil type is very, it likes wet feet. It likes uh, moist soil. You'll see these a lot of times along uh, rivers, <laughs> river birch and ponds and water edges and dry creek beds, etc. drainage. So, you know, have this thing get a lot of moisture and um, fall foliage color, you know, it has this during the growing season, a very small leaf compared to our others today, but a uh, very just dense uh, medium green with that wonderful veining underneath. But you will also in the fall, this will go to a very nice display of yellows to golden, so mainly yellows in that fall foliage. Um, very little disease, insect disease issues, and it does need maintenance. And I'll tell you about the maintenance for river birches. This thing drops branches like crazy once it gets established. So just have in your mind that you're gonna be picking up a lot of sticks once it gets really big and mature. You're gonna have a lot of sticks come down from its natural growth and letting go of certain parts of itself. It drops a lot of sticks. Um, what else? Top growth. The root systems tend to top grow, so be careful of that, similar to the maple. I believe this one's actually worse. So we've seen a lot of heave-ho sidewalks. Um, if these are planted too close, driveways, walkways, etc., be careful. Give it room. It's a big growing tree. Show it some love and design your landscapes properly. Um, you know, five amazing shade trees for you guys today. It's all about shade in the summertime, hot summertime. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button. We love our plant peeps. Remember, all things grow with love. And we're going to see you guys in the next video.